Just here. say goodnight. There we go. Now we got the picture here. Hold kiss, on. kiss. Uh, kiss, kiss. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that was her. She she wants to go to bed, or she's probably going to go watch Luther, no, right? No, I have the television off. Oh, you have the television off? Yep. Well, good for you. At least she's not watching the television. Anyway, hold on a second. Let me just get a few things set up here because we're on the, the TV thing now. And um, uh, I, uh, I, I want you, I got to move some stuff over here. Come on, move over. Oh, God. Can't I move this over? I'm having trouble here. Somebody help me. Uh, producer. Oh, there we go. I got it moved over. Okay. Good, 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 good. I just, it's just, I need this as a reference to see what's going on. Okay, now what we do is we turn on Skype. And I just simply have to sign on. And if you want to call it, it's very simple uh, to call. Uh, it's a simple thing. We have one address. It's uh, Sky, uh, uh, GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T, L-I-B-E, GabNet Live, okay? And you call me, and uh, tonight, uh, when you call me, you will actually be on the uh, on on live stream, uh, which you go over to live stream and look up GabNet, and you'll you'll see the, a picture of what's going on with all the people in the uh, uh, in our uh, uh, little uh, uh, citizens panel. So now I I just simply wait here as I drink a cup of coffee. Am I okay? I've got my I'm not showing below my waist because I wear these pajama things that are very comfortable the girlfriend got me okay so I don't want you to think that I'm I got pajama stuff on okay anyway I'm waiting for people to call it doesn't look like anybody's calling in I've got the uh, lines open oh there we go yeah, first guy every night now regularly is Scott Boddicker and he will be followed I'm sure by Phil Meyer who doesn't want to be the first one calling in because he thinks that will screw things up which it used to Okay. It doesn't anymore. But it doesn't anymore. Let me put, put did, Scott up on the screen. Did Did you say she's going to watch Luther? Are there new Luthers out there? Oh, no, 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 no. She's watching the old Luthers again. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Because she, I, she, she, she gets, uh, uh, she loves Randy? it. Huh? She gets Randy. She gets Randy. a little Randy, does she, when she watches Luther? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, she yeah, sure does. Good, yep, 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 yep. yep. She, uh, Idris Elba is her guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah my wife loves him, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he is probably uh, the sexiest man in the world to a lot of women. Next to, next to Phil. Next to Phil. Yeah. I was just thinking that. Yeah. He, he... <laughs> <laughs> where you, we where just you lost know? our audience. <laughs> <laughs> that happened years ago. Okay. I, you know. <laughs> They're never coming back. They're going, that show has that, that uh, Phil Meyer. I got a note today from somebody that I won't say who it is because we all know the person who said, uh, what has it become, the Phil Meyer show? Well, <laughs> you know, I made you a promise. If you don't want me on every night, it's, it's okay. You know, uh, I'm, I'm happy Actually, to. Actually, I, I, I like you on. It's just not your show. Yeah, I understand. You know, when it comes to the, uh, the I, I'm naturally curious. So you could turn you could turn your microphone down a notch because then right. you wouldn't obliterate everybody else. All you right. see. Well, you know, I'm I'm naturally curious about. Uh, yeah. You know, and I have questions, and I, you know, it's sort of a it's a panel. I thought I was gonna, you know, it's okay to ask. What? Uh, questions of, of of people. Well, I just no, didn't no, realize it, that no, I was it, asking it, the same it, questions no, you, that you were. You start interviewing them. Well, it's a conversation. No, but you no, know, you start inter no, you start interviewing them. Hi, yeah. Mark. It's Mark Green, oh. ladies and gentlemen. And uh, uh, I, I, I want to hear what Mark has to say about that wall that they're building. But now we're paying for it. <laughs> uh, that that was of the of the ten things you won't hear next year. Yeah, and one of them was nice wall. And the other, and the second one was thanks Mexico. So yeah, right. It's not a surprise that uh, that that's not going to happen. Well, don't you, don't you don't you want to be there when they get the bill in in, in yeah. Mexico City? 
you know, the, what? the bill, because he says he's yeah. going to have us build the wall and then we will build them for it. I, I tell you, Alex, I mean, I mean, we think people like you and I think this is this is lunacy. But the people that vote for him, they don't seem to care. Okay. It's like, well, well, sure. That's just that's just him being him again. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, no, it, it, Phil. Phil's a perfect example of a guy who excuses everything he does or doesn't do that he said he was going to do. Say, ah, it's just politics. It's just they say that when they're running. Well, yeah. then why if they say that when you're they're running? Do you quote them of the stuff they're saying when they're running as a basis for saying this person's terrific? You know what it reminds me of. Uh, you know, my father grew up in Brooklyn. And he went to a real tough high school called Boys High. When you got thrown out of all the other high schools, they sent you to Boys High. And he said that the tough guys used to charge him a nickel to get across the street. So he got together with his friends, got six-inch pieces of rubber hose, and charged the t tough guys 10 cents to get back. Well, this sounds very similar to what uh, Trump is saying about the wall. Hey, we'll build the wall and then, uh, and then we'll make them pay for it. I see, but the problem I have with the wall is it keeps me in. Uh, your, your front door keeps you in. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I can open that door and go outside. But I, once that wall is there, cannot go over that border at any point without having to go through. If he says, suddenly decides to close that border, I yeah. can't go through that border. I can't, it, you know, they can then close the West Coast and the East Coast very easily because those are bodies of water. And the only place we can go is north. And Canada doesn't want tons of people up there. Look, there are legitimate border crossings, San Diego. No, they, no they're uh, only legitimate because the current administration says they are legitimate. One day they could say, oh, we're trying to protect America so nobody can leave through those borders either. They'll use some kind of excuse. But the minute you build that wall, it's, it's like Berlin. The Berlin Wall was created to keep people in, but it also kept people out. Well, you better watch out. Next they'll start burning your books and looking for Jews. You know, I, I, I think that your concern over a wall that you can't get past is very, very... Uh, it, it, I just I, and it doesn't it doesn't serve any real purpose. The wall no, does, it, does it bother you though, Phil, that he lies? No, I don't think he lies. I, I, I see think, that's yeah. what that's what he does. He says I don't think he lies. He said what was the main thing every single goddamn fucking speech he gave? What did he say? He said I'm going to build, build the, wall. the wall, and now he's saying basically I'm going to have Congress build it. Well, he knows what's going to happen. Congress isn't going to build that wall. And so he feels he's going to be off the hook. Well, That's, maybe he'll send that, a it, pro forma invoice to It's Mexico. like Evil Knievel going across the uh, Snake River Canyon. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. When he said he was going to take a jet car, a jet motorcycle, and motorcycle across. It. And they did a test, and they found that it was impossible. Okay? Yeah. But he already was scheduled to do it. So what yeah. they did is they figured out how they could abort it halfway and the parachute would make him land and hopefully everything would be okay. And that's exactly what happened. But they knew he would never get across, okay? It's the same thing that Trump's doing. It's the Snake River. He has the Snake River here and he already knows it can't be built. So he's going to go somewhere where somebody's going to refuse to build it and then and it's going to take forever to get somebody to approve it and then say, it's not my fault, I wanted to build the wall. It'll only take uh, a lot of approval pro uh, in California. Uh, the other states will approve it quickly. Uh, what do you mean other states will approve it? There's no states to approve it. It's Congress. Yeah, well, you got it. It'll run through what? New Mexico, Arizona, Texas. No, uh, it, 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 no. Actually, it's going to be. Uh, is it going to be on our side? Technically, is it? Does it have to be on like, our side of the be, border? It could be one of those good neighbor fences where they build it on the property line. Yeah, uh, what What are we going to do? Let me ask you this: What are we going to do about the animals? Oh, hi, Rob Alfano. Hello. Welcome back to the United States of it used to be America. Yeah, welcome back to the United States of Trump. Yeah. Good anyway, why, why didn't why didn't he get the money from Mexico first? Yeah, like he said he was going to. Well, he uh, he he'll get the money. 
Uh, anyway, oh, how, wait, a, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, I'm not going to let you off that easily. Yes, Rob. I think Phil has four years of splaining to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's what he's he's going to have four years of, because you're, you know, look, outspoken Trump supporter. You're going to have four yeah. years of exactly this, because you're going to say, oh, he'll do this. And, and I'm telling you, if he lasts four years, you're 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 gonna be you'll be sorry. I'm telling yeah. you, you'll be sorry. If, uh, no, no, because he'll never he'll never admit he'll never admit that Trump has been doing bad stuff. Because at some point we're gonna all it'll be so blatant it'll be like the the blue shirt I'm wearing. Yeah, it's he's not even president. Yet. He's not even president yet, and, right. and we all know, you know, yeah. uh, we we got an insane clown president. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Everybody knows it. We'll see. I mean, you know, you, you we gotta, all. Weeks left. We, we well, the, the rest of the world, the rest of the world disrespects us. I mean, except for Israel and that bozo, you know. And Russia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, We're in great Russia, today, 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 Trump tweeted that the that that intelligence briefing showed that 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 Russian in interference did not help Hillary. Well, that's what the. Uh, that it wasn't him it helped, that just tweeted that. It was the uh, somebody from the intelligence community. I forgot who it was. By the way, a big hello to Phil, Jason. Phil, 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 that intelligence report is public, and it says no such thing. Uh, I guarantee you, not, not it what says I read. no such thing. Yeah, uh, I saw oh, something on CBSN oh, tonight, and and that was uh, that was the essence of the CBSN. Uh, oh, CBS News. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that thing, their little cable channel, their public access channel. Yeah, really. Well, it's it's one of the few that I get. Yeah. Uh, except Jason's telling me that the hundred channel deal with uh, uh, Direct TV is going to be up on the ninth. So I guess I'm going to have to uh, go for the trial or at least sign up for a few months. There's no contract too, so you can cancel any time. Well, if Just if you let me know what you like about it and what you don't like. Okay. If you, if do you do it. yeah, I will do it. I, if you prepay uh, three months in advance, they give you a Roku four. Oh wow. Well. That's cool. I already I have a Roku 4. Well, I, I only have a Roku 3. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no, no, wait a minute. Did they give you a Ro Roku or did they give you an Apple? No, they give you the new Apple. That's what it is oh. because I can't get uh, – I have a Oh, Roku. right, that right, because they don't have direct TV on, on Roku. On, on, on the Roku, yeah. Right. So they give you the new Apple thing. I think that's, what, 100 bucks or – No, it's about – uh, it's 150. Apple. It's 200. It depends. If they give you the one – that. With the least memory, it's 150. If they give you maximum memory, it's 200. All right. Apple has a, uh, Apple has a direct TV app? Yeah, it's yeah. $35 a month. Uh, uh, no contract. But, uh, no, it's not the Apple uh, app. It's a uh, direct TV service with 100 channels. Uh, no, no, it is not the direct TV service. Well, it's, it, is what, a direct, is uh, it is a direct TV app that has about 100 different channels. It doesn't have all the channels that DirecTV has, and there's no DVR function. Now, supposedly, Hulu is coming out with one with a DVR function yeah. so that you can pre-record a show, but a lot of shows you don't need the but DVR anyway. I, I think anyway. a lot of it, you know, you can go back and watch. Well, no, but here's the thing. It's let's archived. Say, okay, let's say on Monday you want to watch Supergirl, but you're not going to be home. There's no way to record Supergirl. Yes, the next day it will be on the CW. With okay, all the commercials. But it's the next day. Yes, with all the commercials. And you I, can't fast forward through them. I mean, but, I, but like I said, this direct TV now is it's so new. None of us have it, so we really don't know. Like I said, my my theory about it is that, you know, everything's going to be archived. You want to go back and watch something, it's going to be there. Yeah, but, it, but will it be it. archived that day? So that if you want to, let, let's say it's not 8 o'clock when Supergirl is on, it's now 10 o'clock. Are you going to be able to watch it? And the answer is no, because I know how these companies work, because I, I, I get them all the time on Hulu and so on. NBC posts all their shows the next day. Uh, well, if you want to save $100 a month, I guess you got to give up something. Yeah. At commercial. Yeah. The other thing is, if you prepay the three months, you're getting a $150 at least item, uh, and you're getting three months of their service. For yeah, but how long do you have to keep that service in order to keep your? Uh, well, you said oh, oh, three months, months so. because you yeah. prepay three months because right. the Directv now is no contract. Right. Yeah. So as long as you prepay, then you get the item. I mean, I have an Apple 
uh, TV. It's an older one. Uh, it's the first or first generation. Yeah. But uh, I, I would imagine it would work. Yeah. You know, but I, I wouldn't mind having the newer Apple TV. You said it was pretty good. I like it. Says it's good. Uh, you know. <laughs> well, I like it uh, uh, to a point. You know, I the thing I like about Roku is Roku is a little more open architecture. In other yeah. words, I don't know how to make an Apple app. Okay. Yeah, and also, the other thing too, as long as your internet provider doesn't screw with the signal, because I was at a a, a tire place and I was trying to download the AT and T or the Directv app on my phone, yeah, and it wouldn't let me download it when I was connected to their Wi-Fi, which was Comcast. And then as soon as I went off Com, I'm like, what the heck, man? You know, I I did a speed test. The speed was excellent. They had a great signal. And as soon as I disconnected, I went to cellular. It downloaded in like two seconds. Also, well, I have all, all these shows, all these shows you watch, you can't speed through the commercials, you know. Oh, no. So, well, uh, and you know, and yeah. and by the way, if you if you then what they if if you're going to watch like uh, uh, the CW app, basically, you have to watch their commercials. There's no way you can speed through the commercials. Usually, you, it's only like three commercials though, versus a full commercial. Um, uh, it depends. I yes. found that uh, who was it that I was watching I Sling. where it was more of a problem. I have Sling, so I have like 20 networks uh, or, or channels for all intents and purposes. CW is one of them, uh, but um, the the uh, the Sling is 20 bucks a month, and I have 20 channels. So I could get rid of the Sling, which also ha doesn't have a contract, and go over to the Direct TV, which I think has all those channels plus uh, uh, more. And if it's all QVC shopping network, I'm going to be really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not getting that anywhere now since I've cut the cord, and I'm very happy. Well, all, all I'm saying is it really depends on <clears throat> do you have to watch these things live? Or can you then watch them delayed? Yes, Jason. Do you have it, Jason? No, I don't. And that's why I was telling Phil, you know, if you get it, you know, because I work for AT&T and I want to know if it's something I should, you know, tell my customers, hey, yeah, get it. Or, you know, maybe it's not worth your time because you're going to want regular service instead of going to th this kind of service. But um, I heard you guys talking about with uh, the net neutrality like a week or so ago. Yeah, they want to do the the Republicans want to do away with it. And there there's a lot more when you're talking about prioritizing your services, mm -hmm. you do want your services prioritized. Because we're we're where when you have a voice conversation, a lot of issues on Skype mm -hmm. because Skype is a, a OTT service and over the top service mm -hmm. where what's that mean? They can prioritize it. And because it's a voice service, they can get it down to, uh, you know, one millionth of a millisecond delay. Where if you're opening an email, it can give you that email delivery on a slower service because you don't need it to be on the faster service. They can prioritize what needs to be faster, what needs to be slower. But you know, that's, a, a that's not. Sorry? But that's not what they're talking about. But, but that's part yeah. of it. You, you know, I understand, that, and, and that that was one of my complaints about when I was trying to download this app. That's an AT&T app on Comcast, and it won it download. Don't it was listen, taking forever. Don't listen to what the big boys try to tell you about net, net neutrality, because they're all they're all for it. They're all for uh, you know opening it up so that they can get special lanes and all that. But Don't, there should be special lanes for special services because yeah. special certain services are going to yeah. need different speeds than other services. Right. Do you You're, need it to open an email? Yes, as but fast conversely, as you Jason, the, the problem without net neutrality, conversely. They can take like my show, my channel, and slow it down. I, I, I have to speak up here because this is what I do for a living. And there are, too. there are. Well, I, I, I work in data centers, so uh, you work out closer, you know, away. I can tell you right now that there are routers out there. There's equipment out there that does QoS, quality of service. So you can you can do all kinds of quality of service with your IP phones with uh, with video on demand there's internal tools they're not talking about that kind of prioritization or quality of service this is going on at a higher level outside the, 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 in fact the company the neutrality the, they're doing now does include all of that and it does basically say that i can't slow your email down 
no, to no, give no. you a faster phone service. Yeah, that, that is part of this net neutrality that's, that's going on that's, now. That's, that's and they the, need to get they need to get these old ass people who are making not, these decisions. But it is that that's no. one thing that's blocking us and stopping us from delivering better services. Bullshit. You could as long as you're delivering if I'm paying for fifty or seventy five up and down, as long as you're delivering me fifty or seventy five up and down, you can still do a QoS on that fifty. That's the difference. So if you have to if you have to prioritize what's coming down my fifty gig pipe, you can do that with tools. But you can still it, it's not just your pipe; just, it's the whole pipe for everybody. That's the but that's what I'm saying. It's the same thing. You're you're bogging it down in the wrong area. It's above that area. What they want to do it goes above the the delivery to people's homes. They're not talking about. They're telling you a line of bullshit. I can tell you that straight up. There's, there's nothing to do with quality of service between an IP phone, because otherwise it'd be a big mess. Most companies use IP phones, have gotten rid of their old, you know, their old uh, phone systems. And, and it's, you have to have prioritization. Otherwise, your phones wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to hear anybody. And, so and that's part that of now. it, is trying to prioritize. No, what they want to do is they want to take and, and they want to carve up the Internet for themselves the way they want to carve it up. It has nothing to do with what your service but, is. But the way that they prioritize it, too, though, is you have to say, this is the kind of service that I'm doing over here, and maybe you have to pay more for that, which, you know, you're, you're delivering voice service, so you have to pay for the voice yeah, service. But, 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 you're delivering but, email, you have to pay for email. Do you, want, do you want them to be able to have this ability to slow you down? I, I to think slow that you that's down. the only way to be able to to give you better service. <laughs> no, the way to give you better service is to, is to create Bullshit. more throughput. Oh, more crap. throughput. Go to the Internet Society, isoc.org, and take a look at what's going, the information on there about net neutrality and what it means. It has nothing to do with quality of service to your customer. Not at all. Yeah. Do, do you still have that commercial, the porno women? Did, and and I heard that, and that's a bunch of crap. Yeah, you know, the, there's, there, there's parts I agree with. Well, no, but a know, lot of people, when you go net neutrality and you try to explain it, it's very hard to explain. I have a hard time explaining it, and I, I understand to, it. But I'm telling I, you, it's way above what you're talking about. But I'm just saying, I think that the, the quality of Right now, let me say to people who are listening, let me, let me say to people listening right now, we have net neutrality right now. The, right. the law was put into effect. What the Republicans want to do is repeal it. Yeah. Which would then allow the cable companies or uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the big media conglomerates. The big, big me they're, only, they're only a couple of very big, you know, right. people now doing this sort of thing. And uh, uh, they, they want to let them scale you down. For instance, I'm doing my show here. They would just slow down my throughput, you know. Uh, and and uh, Netflix, the oh, they're going to get they're going to get the fast pipe, you know. Would video get some but, sort of priority? Yes, no, and that's make, that's what it is. Is you would be uh, paying, saying, you know, you would probably have to pay a little bit extra to say, I am a video slash uh, audio service, where my email would be saying, a little I'm bit. Do you service. think it's going to be a little bit, a smidgen? I would say on, on your part of what you need, yes. You know, for somebody like Netflix, yeah, it might be a little bit more. Hey, for I'm, somebody paying, like I'm, them. I'm paying for 300, uh, uh, through, uh, 300 throughput right now. Uh, I don't say I should have to pay any more, and I'm not even running yeah, this. And you don't even need that much. You know, for you, what you, what, 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 you what, do. Jason, so you paying uh, 300, 350 a month, Alex? It, it, uh, huh? Aren't you paying like three hundred and fifty dollars yeah, a month? Uh, three hundred uh, some. Uh, no, well, I'm also getting I'm also getting the cable service and all the services that go with that. And I'm also uh, we also have a phone service which got shoved down our throat. Uh, but uh, that's why I'm thinking of cutting the cord because I I do think and, it's it's too. And that's much. one of the things too with what you know, I'm putting in now putting in fiber. You know, three hundred meg. You know, screw that. We're talking about a gig. Gig up, gig down. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, Rob. So, so here I, I took a bit of my own advice and went to isoc.org, and uh, right. here's the real definition of net neutrality: network neutrality or 
open internetworking means that you are in control of where you go and what you do online. Companies that provide internet services should treat all lawful internet content in a neutral manner. It is the founding principle of the internet and what allows the internet to be the largest and most diverse platform for expression in recent history. Basically, it's they would it would limit you where you can send your or deliver get content from on the internet if you don't pay up it has nothing to do with quality of services of your ip phone or anything if, like that this is about this is about um if so i decide to slow something down and speed something up that would be illegal correct you as who if i'm i'm the provider if i decide to slow something down and speed something up that would be illegal correct so if I were to decide to slow down your email delivery in order to give you faster voice delivery, that would be illegal, correct? No, no it's uh, not. But you, you, just, you just said that it would be one illegal called, for me to... One is called QoS, quality of service. The idea is that you have a pipe, a 50, uh, in my case, a 50, what is it, 50 gig pipe that's in coming into my house right now. I've got 50 gig, that's my universe. If I'm using all of that, for one thing, then everything else is going to suffer. QoS says, okay, I'm going to take this per small percentage of it and use it for email, this small percentage of it and use it for streaming video, using Skype, whatever. IP phone calls is another. That's the difference. We're not talking about the Internet as a whole. The Internet uh, net neutrality is not dealing with a pipe from, from the company to you. It's when you're out on the Internet... And how your signal gets out, what you what you send everywhere. Remember, it's not point to point. But now, is it what I receive? Yeah, what do you mean? He's saying it's what you send, but uh... it, it's only what you upload, not what you download. So would it, would it be? I don't really understand this stuff that well. But would it be fair to say that Alex would have to pay money? to provide service equal to what he does now? Well, might, because, well, but, he's now doing, uh, you know... Well, he's, it depends, he's depends on how much they want to diminish other people's service in preference to the people who are paying the big bucks, like the Netflix and so on. Right now, Netflix is, has... It, what's something? I think their bandwidth takes up about 70% of and the Internet. They, Netflix themselves actually slowed their signal down in order to deliver a better quality signal to their customers. Yeah. Wasn't that the big scandal that was in the news about three months ago? I don't know. And they were trying to uh, blame the put the blame on one of the, the you know, one of my competitors, but it was actually Netflix themselves that slowed their own signal down. Uh, they, I don't know that they could slow it down because, for instance, I pay for 4K. And I get 4K. Okay, but it, that's what a lot of people don't understand, too, with data delivery in a lot of cases. It, when you speed up the signal mm -hmm. and there's any type of roadblock or bump in the way, mm -hmm. you screw up the signal more. Yeah. If you slow the signal down and there's that roadblock or speed bump in the way, it can work its way around it. Right, yeah. and you know why that is, because if it's going too fast... And there's, a, and there's a speed bump, what you're calling a speed bump. What that usually means is packets that get lost. They have to be yes. retransmitted. Now, wait, hold on a second. Anybody here have any questions about this? Because this is, this is a topic that's hard to wrap your brain around. But basically, it's that your service may diminish without net neutrality. Uh, and you'll still be paying the same amount of money to your to your cable company, but they and they also want to create a separate highway. Right. Uh, are that you, separate are you, highway is just a segregation of the current highway. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll have a second a separate highway, and sure, the Netflix of the world and so on, Hulu's and whatever, will be on that. Here's, and, here's and the a, rest of us will be on the want, other. Why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't I want, want that? Want because, it, because hold Phil, hold wait a minute. No, hold on, on, Phil. You asked me a question. Right. Why, would I, why wouldn't I want that? Because yeah. it then gives them the ability to give me less service and prioritize but, the other again, as the service they want. But let, let, me, let me retort to this. Wouldn't it be better to have faster service from the things that require it, like streaming movies and, and so forth, and, and other things that don't require a faster service doesn't matter as much? It's going to be about what you can afford to pay. Also, newer services will not come into being quite so easily because Correct. they won't be able to afford that second highway. Correct. 
But we've already got what you could afford to pay no, on cable. No, no, hold so, on a second. Know, hold on a second. It, forget about that for a moment. The cable has nothing to do with this discussion. Well, it, it's it's a uh, it's a tiered system. You know, if you want what you have, you pay three hundred something a month. If you want what I want, you pay thirty five dollars a month. You're well, looking you, at it at a different place. You got to look at it. Oh from, well, you know, you let me give you a good example. Well, you, as a person who cuts the cord and and wants right. to use all these services. They might uh, lower your bandwidth and say you want to get a better picture. You're going to have to pay for higher bandwidth. Right. Oh. Well, I already use at it. They already do that. You're looking at it from a. Right. Uh, you're looking at it too low on the. If you had a look at this as in a model from the bottom to the top, they're mm -hmm. they're up at the top. They're not down at the bottom where 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 the cable company or whomever is delivering a signal to your house. It's up top. Let's just talk about how much yeah. bandwidth is available on the Internet, the entire backbone right. of the Internet. By the They're way, talking about breaking that up. By the way, uh, uh, Jason has his hand up. You know, the, the other day when this was a topic, I think it was Phil was talking about being able to drive in the, the express lane or whatever on the highway. Yeah, the and you guys were saying that was a bad analogy. I think the better analogy is to say, hey, this highway goes from point A to point B and, you know, has however many exits on it. But the subway also goes from point A to point B. And what I think you're comparing with net neutrality, I should be able to take my car and drive it on the subway instead of just on the highway. Because, hey, that, that's a separate path from point I don't know if that's any better an analogy. I don't know if that's any better an analogy. I think that because it's two different issues, you yeah. know, and that, that's where my comparison is where, you know, one of the what we'd think is the easiest thing because it was the first thing to be transmitted or one of the first things to be transmitted over a wire was voice. Mm -hmm. That's one of the highest priorities out there is voice because when there's a lag in the delivery, it makes the conversation awkward. Right. But if you're going to watch a movie and you have to wait two seconds before the, your movie starts, it's really not that big of an issue. If you're going to open an email, you know, the, the email doesn't have as much of a, a, a back feed to it you know, uh, have to be delivered as fast. It's easier if you slow it down, you open it up, it's still there because you slowed it down in order to prioritize somebody else's voice. Jason, you mean this, this, the speed difference? In, in the past, when, when I first got Netflix several years ago, you'd put it on and then all of a sudden there'd be this thing spinning and it'd be stop and it would download. What do they call it? Buffering. Buffering. And uh, now uh, I never get any buffering. Uh, there's a reason saying, why. Do you ever get it fuzzy? Uh, only Never. if I rub it too hard. No, no, no. <laughs> Sometimes uh, Netflix gets fuzzy, and then it kind of clears up. I know Amazon does that all the time. So and like the reason is it's thing. adjusting to your bandwidth. Oh, okay. I, no, I, I've never so if, if your cable company doesn't want to sell you a large amount of bandwidth, you're going to get Netflix fuzzier than other people. Yeah, I think well, I got like a I one. I think one of the, the bigger issues coming in the future where – you know, a lot of the providers are going to be providing fiber optics and other uh, methods to be able to give you a gig up, gig down type of service. I, it's I going to be the main funny. trunk, the main trunk, you know, that's, you know, when you're on, I always explain that the Internet is a highway. You know, and my service that I provide is just the on-ramp onto the highway. You know, right. it's going to be the highway itself that's going to be slowed down and is going to have to have traffic control. That's you're right. That's exactly right. So, it, right. and that's where net neutrality to me. I think you're talking about the quality of service. I think our net neutrality we have now. I believe in it, and I don't think Comcast should be able to slow me down from downloading an AT and T app. But you know, there should be. You know, I can deliver voice faster than I can deliver an email as the provider because I'm trying to provide a better quality of service to the end user. I think and in I, the and the end, they're trying to monetize. The backbone of the internet. Oh, and of course they are. And that's what you got to watch. Well, out. Let me let me unless, hold unless on it's the government providing it for everybody. Hold, hold, it's private hold, hold industries on. providing it for people. So if they want to monetize it, that's the way that the uh, world works. Hold on and, a you know, I'm a big socialist lefty, okay. but at the same time, if the government did provide the service, they would also be doing, you know, saying this goes faster, this goes slower, in order for it to work for everybody. Well, I, you know, I uh, Jeff, uh, I want to ask you because uh, you were sitting there looking. Dismay. Do you understand what net neutrality is? No. See, <laughs> I'm with Jeff. And you're you're a tech guy, Scott. You work for TI. I have no clue what you guys are talking about? 
and I think that's what the government and, and the Congress and it, all that are hoping, and big business is hoping yeah. for, that you don't really understand. Let it. me put it this way. Your Internet bill to get the same service that you're getting now, if they do away with net neutrality, will be considerably larger. Okay? That's just putting it simply. I, I don't think it would be. Mm -hmm. It can't get much larger. Come on. Listen, if, 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 this ben, if this benefits the average the average person, why is it even contentious? Because people who are making the laws don't understand how technology works. Oh, that is not true at no, all. That, that, that's not true. The net neutrality thing was brought, I think, was passed by the FCC, wasn't it? A bunch of people who technologically know what they're doing or should the be. The Internet Society doing. knows what they're doing. I mean, these guys pioneered. These a lot of the guys on the Internet Society board were pioneers of the Internet. Yeah, they know what's going on. Yeah, we've been joined by Tony, by the way. Hi, Tony. Tony. Oh, oh one minute, one minute, oh, one minute. Uh, <laughs> he comes on and then he leaves. <laughs> Ban him. You should ban him again. Uh, It'll be like the third time. Look, why should I ban time. him when he comes on here? He never says anything. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like he, bandwidth. he bans himself, <laughs> you know, um, that's going to cost you more. And, and by the way, I mean, the, the bandwidth bad. we're talking about uh, that, you know, it, it, what it really does is it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't really hurt me all that much initially. Uh, but they will use this of not having net neutrality in some way to make more money off of you. Of course, that's okay. why they're spending the money uh, and trying to get this through. Otherwise, just leave it alone. Business never spends money needlessly. It's only to make money. Right. right. Uh, you sure this isn't uh, the glass half empty uh, in comparison to my attitude, which is free refills? <laughs> well, you're not going to get free refills. Nothing, you know, all, None. I'm, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, on, on a very real level, it would probably affect you in a minimal way. What it does prevent, however, is uh, new parties entering into that space to do things like a Netflix or a Hulu. Right. If, if, if Netflix had had, uh, uh, you know, had to deal with the whole uh, non-net neutrality thing back when they started, although they did, but uh, uh, people weren't trying to charge more and more and more, they would never, probably never gotten to where they are today because they could never, they could never afford... The, it, it, listen, I got to tell you something. When I first started doing internet broadcasting, which was before anybody, okay, the cost of us doing it at a decent sized bandwidth was it was expensive. It was uh, we were we were uh, oh god we were we were using someone else's uh, line uh, to broadcast over. They gave it to us. There was a deal that Play had with them. But it's still, it costs us a thousand dollars a month to have the uh, uh, you know enough throughput to be able to do video and everything from my apartment. It was not cheap. I had a partial T1 many years ago, and I think it was costing me close to four hundred a month uh, for a partial T1. Yeah. So, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, all I'm saying is this is not uh, this is not a good thing. This is not something that we, we can just, uh, uh, you know, uh, say, oh, well, who really cares? You know, and that's what will happen in the end anyway, because people oh, are just oh, generally. Oh, oh, you know why? You know why? 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 Why net neutrality is going to be done away with? Because it's hard to explain it to people. Right, I right. mean, Jeff is a very intelligent, well-versed person. He's even worked with technology all his life. And yet, even Jeff says, "I don't understand what this is all about." And when Why the public neutrality will be done away with is because corporations will pay off the people who are in power now. That's true. <laughs> well, That's uh, then obviously, if uh, Jason, being the lefty you are, don't you get suspicious of anything that they would work that hard? Well, at, well, at killing? I agree, but like I said, a lot of net neutrality I agree with. When I go into a tire store and I'm using their Wi-Fi of Comcast that's supposed to be free for all the customers and I'm getting a 100 meg download and upload or whatever, but I can't download an AT&T app because I'm using Comcast. That's and when I switch over to my cellular and I have a 5 meg up and download speed and I can do it in two seconds, 
that's where net neutrality needs to kick in. That's not but, net neutrality, though. It's a whole different issue. It's got nothing to do with net neutrality. That has but to do th- with that's net neutrality, isn't it? Where I'm using Comcast and Comcast. Well, no, that that, that, to that has to do with somebody service, somebody filing an anti. Block. No, I think there's an antitrust suit there waiting to happen. That's just a firewall block. That, that, should, okay, closed, that should be illegal. Not, now, is, 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 is it, I, I'll get to you in a problem. second, Tony. Is is the blocking of your signal by AT and T because you work for AT and T and it's within the company? Well, I, I'm on my personal cell phone. Okay. I was just downloading the the Direct TV app so I can watch Direct TV on my phone. Uh huh. And who do you? But pay? I was using their yeah. the the tire store I was at. I was using their Comcast Wi-Fi. Oh. The Comcast would not allow me to download that app. Well, that it, also could be the your, the tire store doing it as well because they don't want you downloading stuff. So they may have certain. But they I know because I, I tested it. I downloaded other stuff. And oh, okay. No okay. So then, so then it's that's a an AT and T firewall thing or wherever that was AT and T firewall thing where they're blocking the ports to certain internet addresses because they don't want you doing it I think on what there, we're so. saying why, folks why would AT&T it, uh, not want I you think, to download their app I think what I have to admonish people to do is yeah. try and understand net neutrality and if after you know you know about it and after you understand it if you're against it okay uh, or for it at least you're armed with the knowledge but the fact is that when we get somebody like Jeff, who says, I don't understand it. Scott, who has worked for TI for crying out loud, doesn't understand net neutrality. Mark, do you understand what we're talking about? I, I understand that, that why the, the, the Republican Congress, the first thing they did was try to get rid of the ethics office. Because <laughs> all this stuff is... is all this, all this stuff is hampering it. good, solid corruption, it's all right? About money. And yes, that's, that's what the that's what I do. Know. And that's now, and now, for credits. a guy who thinks that net neutrality, we you know, it's not necessarily a great thing. Phil will now explain net neutrality to us. Well, you know, I'm I'm looking here and there, and this uh, IGF meeting that they had on net neutrality says that they focus on allowing the freedom of expression, supporting user choice, and preventing discrimination. That could be the headline for any group. Uh, anywhere in the world for any 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 kind of thing. Yeah. And they said they also work with local and global businesses to develop solutions around things like network traffic management, pricing, and business models. Uh, you know, uh, even though they say that the internet belongs to the to the people, uh, it's obviously gone beyond that. Uh, that FCC like says that the airwaves. Well, wait a minute. The, the, the citizens supposedly own the airwaves too for radio, but that's, yeah. that's who's okay. who's got their audio on or something. Uh, Mark, that was Mark. Oh, uh, you know. Okay. So I, you know, I don't. I, you know, these things just sound like rhetoric to me. And uh, yeah, and, I know it sounds like you're not going to understand it from the government side or from the people that want one thing. You're not going to understand it from the people that that don't want net neutrality or that want net neutrality. Yeah, you didn't because, convince me. Well, well, they they convinced me that. Yeah, they, uh, that, but Tony's been having his hand up for the last uh, five minutes, and since he never a- ever says anything, I think if he wants to ask us something, but you got to turn your mic on, Tony. You're, uh, Are you using the device you had a problem with the last time? Not hearing you, Tony. Not hearing yeah. you, Tony. It's TV night. Just just hold your hands up and go yeah. like this. Yeah. You sign? <laughs> yeah, he, he <laughs> signs. <laughs> Why isn't your... Are you using the computer where your sound didn't work before? No. You nod your you. head. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go to the computer where it did work? Huh? Yeah, sure. I understand all uh, that. He said his dog is laying on that computer, right. and he doesn't want to disturb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, ISIS is going to gonna cut his head off. Is that what he's saying? He's going to go to the other computer and call us. <laughs> he he doesn't understand if we can't hear him saying something to us. You know, yeah. I'm not a good lip reader, and it's it's very hard to read lips on the uh, on Skype anyway because it's they're dropping about every other frame. You know. Damn net neutrality. Damn net yeah, neutrality. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But what, wasn't that one of the first things that ended up getting net neutrality in was uh, Comcast was blocking 
before AT and T bought it, was blocking Direct TV. You know, people being able to go to the Direct TV website. I don't, I don't See, but again, that's not net neutrality. You're t you're down at a different level. What you're talking about there is is people who are blocked. Net neutrality has nothing to do with a firewall block, and that's what that is. When they do something like that, they find out the IP address of that particular service, and then they block the ports. That's all it is. It's nothing to do with net neutrality. See, in my understanding, that was the biggest part of net neutrality, nothing, saying nothing, I'm a Comcast customer no, no, it, and I it, can't it, go to this website. No, no, what, what, let me use what it really service. is is that each that's conflict of interest kind of thing that's different. On from, the Internet, each and every signal should be treated equally. It's basically right. what net neutrality is. Now, if some company like Comcast is preventing a signal from getting mm -hmm. to your computer by blocking that IP address, uh, as they do in China, quite often well, businesses uh, do it businesses, businesses do it too do it. that's a different story altogether and right. if it's comcast not letting people go to direct tv because it's owned by at&t there's a good chance uh that petty there's an antitrust thing going on there right i agree with you that's petty bullshit yeah is what that's they're... that's are I, you, are I, you I, there I swear, wait a minute that was the wait whole thing that it got it going originally tony's was. back tony can you hear me yeah yes, yes. Uh, the other iMac's working. I don't know what the heck's on with that one. Well, it's probably just something you haven't got yeah, turned on. Yeah, I've got to get into it. Um, I forgot what I was going to ask that. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, I know what it was. Oh, it's on the net neutrality. By, oh, the, way, chance. by the way, it's the 6th of January, Tony. <laughs> 17. Yeah, and, and, and what, should, what should you have done already? I don't know. Looking oh, back of you. Look oh, at oh, i got to yeah. throw this fucking thing out tomorrow. It's killing me. It's <laughs> killing <laughs> I got the little vac. I got a vacuum now that automatically goes by itself. But as fast as it does, it she's picking it up. Yeah. I got one of those Roombas, whatever they call them. Roomba. Yeah. Roomba. Yeah. Thank oh. God it's TV night and everybody can see that he still has his tree. Up. I know. It's going out yeah. tomorrow. Mark. I, I can't take Mark. it. Mark. Yeah. I'll, I'll make an analogy. I don't know if it's, if it's correct. On, with Citizens United, someone with more money has more free speech than I do. Yes. They have more money than me. Ah, very good. Very good. If, in net neutrality, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be correct this, that the guy who has the most money has the most speech? Sure. Yeah, the most, the most, uh, pow the most bandwidth, yes. yes. It's but the think, same thing. But think about yeah, let, so let, let's say Let's say Alex Bennett decides he wants to start a, a Netflix-type service, and now we don't have net neutrality. There's no way I can get the same deal that Netflix is getting. They're going to give me a different deal, right. and right. and and that shouldn't be, you know, uh, because well, what we're talking about. Let, 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 let's go back to the beginning of the internet. Do you know how the internet started? Go no, well, uh, uh, Phil, uh, uh, Let's ask Phil. Phil knows everything. How did the internet start, Phil? It was uh, education and. Uh, uh, and uh, was it military or medical? Medical uh, and military. It was government agencies. It was a method uh, with which these people could communicate with each other. Right. Multiple and a pathways. bunch, a bunch of people who were really smart learned how to hop onto this without being a educational institution or whatever. Same thing I, happened. I used it in 1977. Yeah. Same thing happened with GPS. Yeah. You know. Uh, GPS was uh, satellite uh, sa uh, satellites that were ge geo positioned. They were they didn't move in the sky, and then you could then tell where you were. But that was a military thing, and somebody learned how to use them for non military purposes. And because it was up there, usable, they used it. You know, uh, the government then tried to throw GPSs off a little bit. 30 but, feet, 50 yeah, feet. 30 feet, 50 feet, and so on. But now they don't do that anymore, and everybody's when, using when GPS. When there's a terror uh, alert, then they'll throw it off 300 feet. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is is that, that the Internet started out basically as something that uh, a lot of people had access to. And as the years went on, you know, it, it now is worldwide. And, you know, I mean, you complain about, China not letting, for instance, when I was in China, you couldn't get Facebook. They don't let Facebook in. They don't let Twitter in uh, because they might foment uh, this, uh, you right. know. Right. No free speech. It, it, well, it isn't a matter of no free speech as much as it is 
that a lot of dissent like the Arab Spring and so on were initiated on Facebook and Twitter and so on, and they don't want that happening in China. So it, basically they could start doing that here without net neutrality, you know. Mm, I don't know that that's the same. Uh, again, I, I think it has more to do yeah. with, with uh, capacity and bandwidth than it does with legislation of of, uh, of what goes over that. Uh, yes, Mark had his hand up. Mark? Yeah, this, this, uh, something popped into my head. Phil said something, but, um, and this is a change of, change of course here, but you guys all heard about the Fort Lauderdale airport shooting today. No, I didn't. And the, yeah. you did not? Oh, yeah, you don't I, listen to I, I know there was. Anyway, I anyways, know, I know there was. for Phil. Are you, yeah. are you, this guy put his gun in his check luggage, bag, right? Did he, where were the bullets? Must have been in a different check bag. Because when he pulled his bags off the conveyor, then he retrieved the gun and he retrieved the bullets, uh, possibly from a second bag, and then loaded the gun. Uh, you know, I've traveled. So that, that's you know, okay? I, I guess that, is that okay? That wasn't the question. You asked me oh. how he retrieved it, whether it's okay or not. Uh, I think that that may be a fault in the system on how we transport guns because I have uh, gone and and flown on an aircraft uh, and checked my uh, check guns and ammo into into luggage. Uh, I, I was going to a were train. They, were, thing. Did you check them in two different bags? Yes. What's but, the, what difference does that make? Well, they you're can't supposed be in the same to separate it. But the other thing is, it's supposed to be in a in a in a pouch or a bag that is locked, uh, and and this is all good if you're sane, but if you're you know if you're out for jihad, uh, then uh, it sets up a, a system. I think that they need to handle them differently, separately. Well, let, let me let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question because I did see the headline. I did see the headline today, but I didn't get the full story. Uh, was this it guy? Was I don't think our president is sane. So, yeah. So, yeah, he shouldn't be allowed to have a gun. How many people are there in the sane talking Yeah, well, you know, there's obviously an issue in the way they transport uh, uh, weapons on airplanes. Okay, uh, Jason. don't have an answer. Jason has his hand up. You know, that, that's one of the things, sorry, the picture of froze. Um, why do you have to transport ammo? Maybe they should just say you can't transport ammo. Hey, you can still transport your gun. You just have to go to the store and buy your ammo right. when you arrive. Well, sometimes you can't. I mean, you know, I... You can't took, what? I took a 1,000 rounds of ammo with me. Why? Why? Yeah, Why? If you bought a 1,000 rounds of wait ammo... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Back, uh, Jason, Jason, I just heard something here. A it's a, like a red flag. Why a 1,000 rounds <laughs> of ammunition when you are only trying... course. Um, and uh, shooting a thousand rounds uh, in that one week course was, uh, I came back with no ammo. Couldn't you buy it where you were going? Uh, Prescott, Arizona? Yes. Yeah. Oh, listen, I, if, if anywhere you, you could buy it, at? Look, look, look at, look look at Jeff thing. laughing at you. I mean, if, so what were you going to say? What well, were you thinking? You know, hold well, on a second. What were you, hold on a second. What were you thinking, Jeff? Well, first of all, how much does it cost you to buy that, that much? In no, in those days, uh, I don't know. It was maybe ten, twelve bucks a box of fifty. So now it's uh, about twenty five dollars a box. For your thousand shots that you, that uh, you it's for four hundred and fifty, five hundred dollars. Okay. okay. And but you know the, the and, and you is, couldn't buy that. You could, and you can't buy that on Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure. I've never bought it. On uh, can you buy it? Can you? I think no. I think Amazon doesn't sell ammunition now. I think they stopped. And uh, guns. I'm sure in Prescott, Arizona. You know, I probably could have. Prescott, Arizona. I think the number of gun shops in an Arizona city, at least, w must be ten. Well, I, they I, sell I, them at Babies R Us. There, what are you talking? About? <laughs> gun sight. Gun sight is a training. Uh, and I'm sure they don't least. sell ammo there. Oh, well, uh, the, I'm sure they did, but you know there was no problem in bringing your own at that time. Uh, now maybe uh, with the weight restrictions and and so forth, it would make it economically not viable to uh, to bring it on the plane. 
you know, I... Uh, Why do you need to bring explosives on a plane? Yeah, right. Well, because I was going to a handgun okay. training you're, course. But still, that, you're bringing an explosive onto a plane. You know, well, it's, and it's, that's my whole thing. With, with gun no, control... Bullets are inert uh, and, until, you, until you fire them. Until you put fire to well, them, then they can explode. I give you a, so you're bringing a, a, Can I, can I be there. even more logical fire. about this? So you, so Would you, how, how much does a thousand rounds weigh? Uh, it's pretty heavy. Okay, so do you really think that you would uh, you would put that in your in in your lug? Not like, anymore. It, wouldn't it be cheaper to buy it somewhere else? Now it is, but in how when big I, of an explosion would a thousand rounds make if it all went off at the it, same it, time? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Can you imagine when if you no. could get all of them to go off at the same time, how big of an explosion could you make? You can you can hold a, a bullet. And, I understand uh, that, Phil. I'm saying if you took all of the black powder, gunpowder that were in them, made it all go off at the same time, how big of an explosion would that be? I, I don't know. I don't think it? very big, uh, because uh, bullets don't explode. Uh, they explode know. every time you pull a trigger. Yes, but that's, <laughs> that's a primer. It's a primer. That's it's it's a reaction. And the primer has to be indented. Then how come we hear about explosives factories blowing up all the time? Well, those are those. Um, they catch uh, fire fire and fire. No, 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 bullets, no, bullets bu bu ammunition. Yeah, no, no. It, you set, you put a bunch of ammunition in a building, set the building on fire. I guarantee you, you're going to hear a lot of explosions. Well, so I, said, I had right to bear arms, start regulating bullets. Well, I had it in an ammo box, you know, one of those military green ammo boxes. But at the time I took it. There were no restrictions on weight. Can on we say that we packs. just basically think you're insane for taking a thousand rounds of ammunition to some place when you could have bought it there? I know I I maybe could have, but I, you know I had it, and they said bring it. You know they they had no. How many? Issue how many can I ask you a question? How many rounds of ammunition do you have in the house right now? Five six hundred. Why? Why? Is, is an army going to attack your house? Are you ready for the FBI to surround you? What? Well, it's not uncommon to shoot 100 rounds uh, when you go out to the range. And so I don't want to go to the store uh, every other week Ugh. to get stuff, so I buy it in quantity. How often do you go out to the range? Uh, well, in the last three months, probably five times. You know something? You're insane. You're really yeah. insane. You're, well, it's, you're, it's you're, nice you're the very reason, you're the kind of crazy person that shouldn't be allowed to have no, a gun. See, a I, I disagree. Us. I think Phil is the I type of person like. that I trust with a gun. I agree. You know, he's very responsible with his weapons. His weapons are locked up. Yeah. He does go out and yeah. he does shoot regularly. He is the type of person yeah. I trust he, with The him. problem is he's one brain tumor away <laughs> from taking out a, 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 a preschool. You know, because it's it every really... time they interview people about the guy that just took out the preschool, they say he was such a quiet guy. He never but seemed to be I'm not a quiet truck. guy. Well, <laughs> so, you know, maybe, so maybe, I'm, maybe I'm you're, maybe you're right, Phil. That. Maybe you know, maybe because you're the kind of guy they go. Why did he do that? He's such I'm an glad asshole. To hear that Phil goes to the range, you know, because that's how you stay good at what you do if you want to fire. It's weapons. a perish It's a perishable skill. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and if you don't shoot at least once a month, uh, your skill level what, will what, drop. What are you keeping that skill level up for anyway? Well, it, you know, it's I developed that skill over you, many, many you're years. You're not a rent-a-cop anymore. No, but I don't want to lose my ability that I, I developed. It's like if somebody was a weightlifter and uh, then they stop lifting weights, they start to atrophy. Well, I don't want my shooting skills to atrophy. Why? Because I, I, I earned them the hard way. I, I, I if took, you have a gun, you should be responsible with it. Right. Yeah. Get and a decent shot be, with it. And if I, if I should ever have to use well, it. Well, I don't even want to see him having a hit gun. When, I'm, when I want to hit. Jeff, say something. The, you said that you, that you learned to, to be good at firing with, uh, with a gun. And wasn't that for your military or your uh, business Police. stuff? No, Police stuff? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, but you're no longer doing that, right? That doesn't mean that I don't, uh, that I want to give up that sport or skill. Uh, you know, uh, I, I might have uh, been a professional piano player, 
And, uh, you know, I want to continue. If I was a piano player, I'd like to continue to be able to play the piano, whether I get paid but you for it or not. you buy 500 pianos. Let, let me just say to Ray Renati, but if I, he's I listening, Ray Renati just tried to call. Hold on a second. And you, what you have to do is you have to go up to where it says call, and you have to uh, um, ask to be made a contact. So then we can put you in with the citizens panel. Otherwise, I, I can't blend you in. I, I wish I could, actually. That name sounds familiar. Hasn't he called before? Um, I don't. It does I don't, sound familiar. Yeah, it does sound familiar, and I have no idea. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can do it somehow. No, there's no way I can do it. No. Mm. No, unless he hangs up, maybe I can call him. He used to call on the phone. You know. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Yes, he used to call on the phone. Yeah. Ray... If you want to, just go up to uh, where it says uh, call. I'm showing and, people here. Go to and, contacts, and, add contacts. And, you go to contacts, go add contacts, say GabNet, and uh, it will Gabnet immediately live. show up here. GabNet Live, it will immediately show up here, and I will accept you. And then you can call in. Okay? But that's about the only thing I can say, Ray. I wish I had a, a, a better idea here. But see, I'll say, you know, I, with guns, I... I'm not a big gun person. The older I get, the less and less I like guns. But I admit, when I go out and go shooting, it's fun. It's, you know, to be able to say, hey, hey, I got a better shot on that target than you did. You know, I'm a better shot than you, whatever. You know, it, it, it's kind of a, a machismo type of thing, you know. Just, a, you know, it is, it's a macho thing. And it's also a good feeling to be able to know, hey, if somebody breaks in my house, I can protect my family. But, you know. I personally think you should regulate what you know, regulate ammo. You know, hey, you can buy a gun if you're legally able to buy the gun. You have to prove and show that you legally own this gun to be able to buy ammunition for that gun. And that's all you can buy ammunition for. You can't buy ammo for something else that you don't own. Why are you trying to buy ammo for that? Well, by the way, let me just say to Ray so Renati, I just I if people and people probably <laughs> saw it on TV. I put up. Uh, 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 went to him and I said, add as contact. And then it asked you, Ray, uh, I, I sent you a note. And if you want to, oh, there we go. He, well, he's back online again. Uh, if you want to accept that uh, thing and you will be able to uh, call us and get on with the citizen panel. All right. Anyway, let me. Anyway, I, I, have, I have fired a lot of guns. And, and I just think there has to be something between the Second Amendment, and nothing we can do about mentally ill. There's got to be something between those two things. There is, there is Mark. There's a law what? that says mentally ill can't own a gun. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes oh, we okay. don't know. Yeah, why but, do they keep killing everybody? Because, because they, they're mentally ill. No, because <laughs> no, but they're mentally ill after the fact. You know, that's the problem. How, how, do you, how, do, how do you tell they're mentally ill? That's the problem. They have a sign. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, how do you tell? I'm See, not a, I'm not a mentally, I'm not a professional, okay. uh, person yeah, that we've deals been, with mentally ill we've, we've been joined by Ray Renati. See, I got it. Did you get my little message saying accept or whatever, Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Turn on your camera, Ray. Do you have a camera, Ray? Yeah. I don't know why it's not showing. I'll, I'll do, I'll fix it. Oh, turn well. Turn it off and turn it on. Just talk louder into the phone and we can okay. hear you. Yeah, do you have something to say about this? Oh, are you talking about net neutrality still? <laughs> that, that's, it's all... Or guns. What are you talking about? Both. Because I turned it on. Both. We're, saying, uh, uh, we're talking guns. about gun neutrality. I don't know. I used to hunt. Uh, I used to have guns, but uh, it's so hard to, to even get on anyone's property anymore. I just gave up on it, so I don't have them anymore. You got a gun, you just tell them I'm coming on your property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's gun work. neutrality. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, where do you live, Ray? Oh, here, here, here comes Ray. There he is. Oh, okay, yeah, I just said the word. I live in, uh, well, I live in the Bay Area. Yeah. The Bay Area, like Boston? No, Bay Area, California, San Francisco. Well, yeah. yeah, so there's not like a hundred, a lot, a lot, not much hunting land around that neighborhood. Well, there used to be when I was a kid. There was a lot. Um, yeah. You could just go down to, like, Merced. Uh, go to yeah. southeastern Ohio. There's tons of it. Yeah, come yeah. up to Michigan. You'll you get the biggest deer you ever get. I used to go <laughs> pig, I used to go pigeon hunting in the Santa Cruz Mountains, like, uh, 10 miles from my house. But 
ne the ne then one year we went there and there were um, condos there. So. <laughs> All the pigeons are hanging around Trump Tower now. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Ray, we thought you were familiar. Have you called the show before? Or? I have, yeah, like years, uh, about a year. I I called a bunch of times, like a couple years ago. Yeah. But I haven't been able to do it because I've been working at night. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you called tonight. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because we're talking about how crazy Phil is as a crazy gun owner. <laughs> you know, the funny part oh. about it is they go, well, how did this guy get a gun? He's crazy. Well, to begin with, anybody that kills anybody else is automatically crazy. You know, I mean, what to, if it's done? No, to dignify, to dignify murder by saying that some people aren't crazy when they commit it. But it's to, not murder if it's Lex Talianis, uh, uh, you know, if it's if they're protecting uh, uh, life. Uh, and uh, We're not talking about else's. that. We're talking about the people that go in and take out a, a kindergarten class. You know, we're talking about we're talking about it, But we're also talking about anybody that would kill another human being without provocation. Does that make you happy, Phil, with your Lex Talialis yeah, or whatever? Yeah, it makes me a little happy. Uh, you know. I think I had Lex Talialis once. My ass itched. Anyway, uh, but, but the point the point is that, that um, uh, 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 now what now I forgot what I was going to say because it was Lex Talialis. You needed more Talianus. Yeah. No, but the, no, but that to say that somebody who commits murder for whatever reason is sane, you know, they say, oh, we want to plead insanity, and they say, well, we've determined he's sane. Well, no, he wasn't sane. He killed somebody. Don't dignify he's it. He's sane now, but he might not have been sane at the well, time. Well, I think that, they now say he's mentally competent to stand trial. Yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, who? Oh, uh, Jeff raised his yeah, hand. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a number of people who kill themselves, and they're just as nutty as anybody, right? Right. And well, that's okay. And the, the, question is, okay. the best way to keep guns. I have a solution on how to keep guns. I have a solution on how to keep guns out of the hands of crazy people. Don't sell them. That's it. Make them illegal. Just we don't need them. them. We don't need Do it them. The way the criminals. Do. We don't need them. You know. Yeah, they steal them from you know unresponsible well, gun owners. Yeah. Every gun is legal originally. By the way, the most uh, uh, egregious crime that has happened in the last week, I guess, and you say, how do I know this sort of thing? I watch TMZ. Uh, is is are those three kids who tortured a mentally a challenged person. Mm -hmm. Was it four? Yeah, it was yeah. four. Yeah. It was four. Two sisters and two guys. Yeah. And uh, uh, now that is really mentally deranged. And they did it because they said he was a Trump supporter? I, it, no, they, 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 they did it in the names of Black Lives Matter. Well, yeah, apparently white, some... white mentally challenged boys don't matter. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 you know, so uh, when we talk about crazy, there was a crime and there wasn't even a gun. All of those Black Lives Matter people are getting used by the Black Panthers. The new Black Panther Party is really what's behind all of this uh, uh, tumult and the Black Lives Matter stuff. The new Black and, Panther uh, Party? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've heard of the new Black Panther Party, and they're not like the old Black Panther Party. No. Not they're at all. they're I mean, not they're not they're as should the, should the Black Panthers be allowed to have buy guns? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. You know, if uh, they're law-abiding yeah. citizens, Ray that Ray has his hand. Have the same rights oh. as everyone else. A lot I mean, of mentally ill people are law-abiding. Yeah. Ray, I I personally don't think guns should be outlawed. Um, I just think there needs to be a middle ground. But my wife is from France, and in France, if you're a hunter. You can join a hunting club. You can own guns, but you have to keep the guns yes. in, locked up at the club. You have to have, you have to have training. Uh, you can shoot for you know target practice, but the guns need to be kept in a certain place. I mean, they have a lot of laws. Well, that, the, the same guns. thing is true in England. You, yeah, same you, thing. you have so, so you so you have the right. Got the gun. You have the right to have a gun, well, but it has yeah. it has to be at a gun club. But Switzerland's a little tiny country with. A lot of rich people in big houses. I mean, they're not, they're not going to go around shooting each other. And I can't remember who said it, but you know, the greatest thing that ever came out of Switzerland was the cuckoo clock. Uh, Jason, <laughs> I wanted to ask Ray a question on his thought of it since he's brand new. 
So do you think this is not the easiest, just most simple thing? You can only buy ammo for a gun you legally own. Uh, I only buy ammo. Well, why would that prevent you from shooting people? If you stole the gun, you can't buy ammo for it. Okay. But you could so, buy a gun and still kill people with the gun. I'm not but that, I'm just saying this is the, the easiest and most simple step that shouldn't infringe on anybody's right whatsoever. If you well, legally a, own a, a gun, you can buy ammo for it. But if you don't legally own a gun, you can't buy ammo for it. Well, that's a Does good that, step. But why? Know, that's just but, a simple, but I, easy. But step. I also think, I mean, a lot of, a lot, most of the gun deaths I've heard in this country are, you know, people, children accidentally shooting their siblings, things like that, because people leave loaded guns in drawers and and all these types of things, oh. and uh, which is absurd. I mean, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, guns, the guns should be separate from the ammo, locked up in separate places, and people Agreed. are trained and those on are, how to use Those are accidents, not intentional crimes. Yeah, but there's and a lot I'm talking about of... stopping intentional crimes. Well, by the you way, it's that, Phil's that, trying that, to shoot. That's a safe. Yeah. That's a gun safe. That's and, how it's uh, supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. You know? I used to have one of those. Yeah, and, and, and I think anybody... You said, wait a minute, hold on a second. Gun. Ray, you said you used to have one of those. Yeah, yeah, I don't have guns anymore, but when I did, they were locked up in a safe. Yeah. And Why? the ammo was locked up in a separate safe. Why did you stop having guns? Because I didn't hunt anymore, so I got rid of the guns. Oh, okay, see, you had a reason. If you get a home invader, do you tell the guy, wait a minute, i got to get to my safe? Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's a good question. But they well, do I mean, have, that's yeah. not the point. Of See, that wasn't my point of having guns. I was a, I was had them only for hunting. was never even considered for home invasion or anything. And that like would that. be mine. And mine would be they have the safes where they have the fingerprint, you know, unlock of it. So you go up there, you sit there, you touch it, and it unlocks it. And I'm sorry, my gun would be locked and loaded. It's so somebody breaks in my house. Jason, those things. It's actually I mean, that's a, an American you, way of thinking. You know, I got to tell you something. And this, this is this is something that I've heard many, many times. That people go out and they buy a gun for home protection. And then something does happen. But they, when it comes time to pull the trigger, they can't do it. That's true. And yeah, then what true. happens is... Where there wasn't a gun to begin with in this scenario, there is now a gun, and it gets taken away from them, and they get killed by their See, own gun. And I agree with that, but it's at the same time, I also know that I grew up on a farm, and I've killed plenty of things. <laughs> so if somebody coming and attacking me, I'm not going to Still, have you know, when you're confronted with a human being coming at you, and you've got to pull a trigger, knowing what that gun will do, the kind of damage it can do, uh, it, it, maybe you could do it, Jason, but a lot of people who just buy a gun for safety at home just couldn't do it. And, and many times people are killed with, more people are killed with their own guns. Then they shouldn't have one. Well, you know, well, uh, uh, but wait a minute. These are responsible, decent people. Why shouldn't they have one? You're now, you're now saying, you're saying that we should have the right to bear arms, but you're saying some people shouldn't have guns. It, they well, should be uh, trained just trained like and well regulated that's not wait a minute wait a minute you have an it, automobile it, if you're going to it drive doesn't it say it doesn't highway. say in the constitution that you it's have to go to a training thing. course that you have to go to a training course you're making too much sense there phil because your republican buddies don't believe in all that well you know i believe in training and yes. I, and i believe that if you're going to own a gun or if, and you're going to want to use it uh or potentially use it you need to be trained I was talking to um, uh, Tony the other day about the color code system oh, of yeah, awareness, uh, which is something that I learned at Gunsight in Prescott, Arizona, mm -hmm. from uh, Colonel Cooper. And uh, what it is is it's a matter of, uh, of, of being in different states of awareness so that you're, you don't end up being a victim uh, of a mugging or uh, uh, some other kind of catastrophe. And uh, it's the same thing owning a gun you just can't be in what they call code white, where you're walking around oblivious uh, to, to what's going on. And if you have something that could potentially kill somebody, wouldn't you want to be trained how to use it? My, my girlfriend said to me, Phil, you know, I told her, you know, if I were to pass away, I have a friend who has the combination to the safe. He's a gun dealer. You just call him. I, I told him he could have two, two of my guns, the ones that he wanted, when I passed away, and the rest of them just sell whatever you get for it, give to Faye. And uh, 
she says, well, why, why can't I keep one? I said, you can't keep one because you don't know how to use them. You know, well, you, don't, you don't know how to use it, and I don't want you to end up getting you know, hurt because nice, you have something you don't nice, know what to do with. It's nice that you're so uh, um, good about this, but mm -hmm. well, most people aren't. It's true. Well, See, that's, that's, that's most people aren't. And, oh. That's the problem, Phil, is like I totally agree with you. I, when I was 10 years old, I took a – I remember my parents sent me to a – pretty extensive gun training class and it had a huge impression on me for the rest of my life but the problem is is most people won't do that is unless they're forced to mm -hmm. i mean the vast majority of people just won't do it they'll just well, go buy the gun down at big five and they're done with it and they, they think, think they, they, to... they people are ignorant of certain things people are ignorant of a lot of things and that happens to be one of them they think just because they have the gun means they know how to use it i have hundreds and hundreds of hours of uh, of instruction and practice, uh, you know, over the last 25 years, and uh, I went from being the worst shot in the department. Uh, when we transitioned from revolvers to automatic weapons, they weren't going to let me carry one, mm -hmm. and the reason why was that I was such a bad shot. And they also thought you were crazy. Well, <laughs> and you know, there was only one guy that was worse than me, Sergeant Ship, and they were just waiting to retire him. He had Parkinson's disease. Oh, so, that's great. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so what ended up happening uh, was I got, I made friends Wait with minute, Let me ask you a question here, Phil. Yeah. Do you think a person who has Parkinson's should be allowed to have a gun? Would you tell the guy stand still? Uh, uh, would you, or, or would you go against your basic constitutional beliefs and say we should not give that guy a gun? I don't know. I, I didn't have Parkinson's. He outshot me. Well, you know, he was a better shot than me. So. I mean, my way of thinking, I don't, I don't want Michael J. Fox having a gun. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, what ended up happening was uh, a friend of mine uh, was in the military, mm -hmm. uh, and he was in charge of training uh, all nuclear. Uh, the, the nuclear. The that, yeah, that would take over nuclear assets. And nuclear. <laughs> and, he said on the train. Yeah. So anyway. He, he said if he could teach me to be uh, at Olympic level or a near Olympic level on a handgun, he could teach anybody. And uh, the year he taught me, 1992, I actually came in number two in the entire department. And the only guy, I was one shot behind him, and the only guy that uh, beat me by one round was one of my friend's instructors. So okay, so, all right, all right, okay. You you monopolize you most of this conversation. So let's let's let other people yes. say stuff here for. for okay, I was going to say something. Yes, yep. Mark, you were saying you something. You the color code, Alex. When he told me about the color code, I read the book Serpico. When he was undercover, Phil, they used to wear color codes so they would know that the cops knew he was a undercover. That like when he went out on the street, he said in the biography, he'd have something on his elbow like a baby. Oh, yeah. Head. That wasn't what I was talking about. I know, yeah. That's what I thought you meant. I thought you were on the couple. No. Nah. So I forgot. I think he's on the couple for Alex. All now, the Ray, let me refresh me in my memory. What do you What do you do for a living? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'm an actor, a director, and I have a uh, photographer. Oh, okay, good. Have yeah. we seen you in anything? Or no? Uh, well, you know, Alex, I'm up here in the Bay Area, so I've, I'm in Actors' Equity. I do a lot of musicals and plays and stuff. Yeah. I've been in some films, but there are a lot of independent films and commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing. Are you able to earn a living doing that, or do you? Uh, a combination of all of it. Yeah. 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 The bigger like question it, is, your autograph worth anything? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but but the best thing is the insurance from my union, from Actors Equity. Actors Equity is great insurance as long as I work enough weeks every year. I get a lot of. I get excellent in health insurance. So. Well, I'm sag after, and I'm at such an a age now that I get it free every year now. And it's great insurance, huh? What no, I do? no, I never was able to get the insurance. Uh, I oh, but you don't have to pay to, to join, to renew every year. Right, because it, the funny part about it was I have always been a member of AFTRA, and yet most yeah. of the jobs I've held were not AFTRA jobs. Uh, so and you didn't get the benefits? So I didn't, I, I do get, I get about 800 bucks a month. Well, you know, yeah. which is okay. It's a little something. But if I, I know guys who were in uh, the Screenwriters Guild who worked over at the Letterman Show. Yeah. And at a certain age, I think it was 60, were forced to retire because Six. they were going to make more money oh off their pension than they were yeah. going to make off of That's staying fun. at the Letterman Show. 
that's funny. Uh, so I wish that I had worked, all my jobs had been after, but you know, as I started going along in the business, less and less stations I worked for were after. When I was here in New York, all the stations I worked for were after. Yeah. And after that, I hardly worked after at all. And um, as a result, except like when I would do TV, for instance, TV stations were after. Uh, uh, but still, I get 800 bucks a month for just maybe like six years work in New York City. So mm -hmm. that's pretty good. So I could imagine Actors' Equity if you work constantly, you know. What's yeah, I'm, right now I'm at like, uh, I think if I took start taking my pension, I'd get like 300 bucks a month, which is not bad. But, yeah. you know, if I keep working for the next 10 or 15 years, I'll have, you know, it'll be a decent amount. Yeah, money. well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining about the 800 a month that yeah. I get. And, you yeah, know, if I were to still work after jobs, it would it would raise uh, even yeah. while I'm old and decrepit, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, that's just an afterthought. Ray, what yeah. kind of photography do you do? Yeah, but it's, it's kind of a saggy oh, one. I do, uh, you know, I, uh, I do a lot of actors' headshots and um, – because I'm in that business, I also uh, I do all kinds of things. I do events. I do. I've done weddings. Uh, I'm doing a, a shoot at an, a, a furniture store next week <laughs> for a magazine. Yeah. You ever do any carpet stores? <laughs> no, I haven't done any carpet stores. Pretty boring. Stores. <laughs> the ghost <laughs> no, I'm doing you no, I have carpet stores. <laughs> yeah, the only rug that's cheaper than the ones you can buy at, uh, at Phil's place is, is the one on his head. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. <I'm, laughs> it is all mine. Real? <laughs> Didn't you have to fire a woman the other day? What'd you say, Rob? Didn't you have to fire a woman the other day? Yeah. yeah, you can't oh, yeah. Survive, yeah, yeah. You had to become Simon Legree just before Christmas, I believe. Yeah, that was terrible. Nice. Well, you know, uh, sometimes you got to make the tough decisions. How'd that but, go? Uh, uh, it went she fine. You're fired. No, she actually kind of knew that, you know, you could tell when somebody didn't want to be there, you know. She and, uh, the oh, if I were working for you, I wouldn't want to be there either. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping in the back. <laughs> she didn't want to work. Where's yeah. there? What uh, do you, oh, what, how'd you know she wanted to be fired? I, I own a carpet store in Concord. In Concord, California? I yeah. like fire stuff. Oh, we're neighbors. Where are you? Where are you, Ray? You ever need any carpet? Come wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. One. Ray, where are you? Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I live in Walnut Creek now. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he lives down where Stanford is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I did a concert down there once, the Frost Amphitheater. In fact, oh. I did it twice, two, two, two summers in a row. Oh. I, yeah. I tried name dropping Phil's name at a carpet one store. Didn't work. Well, <laughs> it was in Michigan, and you were talking to the employees, not to the owner. <laughs> uh. Would he have known you? Uh, might have, yeah. Might, uh, so, might have. Uh, what what city was it in? Uh, Shelby, or was it Sterling Heights, Shelby, something like that. Shelby, yeah. It was a Shelby Design what, Center. Did it have a, a, a name, Carpet One something or something Carpet original One? Original Carpet One. Original. Uh, I'm not sure. So that was I, the I, original. Go to the website. It's the same website. Yeah. And actually, yeah. you know, I put in Carpet One and Carpet One, your regular normal There, there are two things I've ha hated over the years. It's any place that it has a name and they start the first word in the name is original. <laughs> uh, because here in New <laughs> York. Original Ray's? Well, yeah, original yeah, Joe's. No, no we, have, we had Ray's Pizza. And Ray's Pizza years ago, <laughs> people were lined up around the block because they learned the one thing here in New York with food. If you put more on something, people will line up around the block. They put more like cheese. Morons? on theirs then so Ray's became famous. So everybody who opened up a pizza place called themselves Ray's. <laughs> and all of them not only call themselves Ray's, they all call themselves original Ray's. Yeah. Aren't and, there only some of them that have charcoal fired ovens? I, I have no idea, but all I know is that one time switch. I decided to look at the phone book when there were phone books. Yeah. There were at least two hundred Ray's pizzas in New York City. You know, Carpet One Good. comes just before Carpet Two in the phone book. Right. Uh, Jeff? <laughs> as far as pizza goes, in New Haven, Connecticut, which they claim that they invented pizzas in the United States. And, and they use coal. Ew. Okay. And, yeah. and, then, and therefore, the pizza, I think it's like 800 degrees. Mm -hmm. And it's actually... A little burnt all around the bottom, yeah, yeah. 
but it's incredibly good. Wait, where is the worst pizza in the country? Oh, I'd say it has, has to be something like Domino's. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 not, not pizza chain. Hey, that's it's a Detroit worst pizza. Area in the country. I think Miami has the worst pizza. I'd have ever. to beg to differ with you. Salt you know? Lake City, Utah. Where Any... I live, it's pretty horrible pizza. Yeah. Where? Uh, pizza, right? Where you are? Yeah, it's horrible pizza here. Really? That's San a... Francisco, it's like Cardinal. And by the way, again, it's Maryland, right? Virginia. 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 <laughs> they say, I always, I don't know why, what's with me that I can't remember where, which state you live in. Oh, you know, the Hold on a second. Few regulars, why don't you just write the stuff down? Virgins, <laughs> Virginia. Okay, I got Virgins? it now. now yeah, I, I, Word I, association. I'm going to remember virgin. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Alex, do you remember all the original Joes out here in oh, the Bay yes, Area? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And, uh, original Joes Joe are special. Everywhere. But the original Joes were, I think, the same company everywhere. Uh, it, Chestnut the, Street and West Lake. I don't think, yeah. yeah, there's one out yeah, in West the, Lake, and it, it just it, closed the West Lake one. Really? really, and they had a thing called the the uh, the uh, Joe's, Joe's uh, special. Joe special, special, which yeah. was uh, mm -hmm. uh, hamburger, hamburger and spinach in an uh, in, in, in scrambled. Yeah, in, in yeah. with egg, and uh, I, my mother used to make it all the time. I mean, it was a good little uh, good little. Breakfast, you know. Yeah. Like Joe's special yeah. pizza parlors around where you guys live. Did they call them pizza parlors or pizzerias around the country, like they do in New York? But pizzeria, pizzeria, pizza parlor. Uh, not out here. They serve French fries. They serve French fries here. What the fuck? Hey, what Phil. Fries? In Berkeley, there's that. Gr uh, there's uh, Zachary's. What's it? Zachary's Pizza. Yes, Zachary's. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, I don't see what people see in Zachary's. Uh, well, there's a line. Yeah, uh, that's you know that's you know you, you you go anywhere and and people start lining up. They think it's good, you know, yeah. and they get into the line. They called lemmings, you know. They just get in. Oh, you know, this is good because it's a line. Hey, I'll know? tell you, as somebody who works outside, if I'm gonna go eat somewhere, I'm gonna look at the parking lot, see how full the parking lot is. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe they're next door to a movie theater and everybody parked. <laughs> 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 yeah, by the way, we have some listeners tonight in France and Italy. So I just want to say um, hi in French and hi in Italian. Sure. Oh, I got a uh, uh, But, uh, uh, it, you know, I'm, uh, the worst pizza to me has always been the stuff you send out for. You know, when I grew up, I grew up in uh, North Beach. Yeah. And... Uh, I know what pizza was like, and it was always thin crust, you know, thin. Yeah, 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 I mean, you had to double it over to eat it because yeah. otherwise it would just flop down. Still drips on your arm. And, and then all it. of a sudden when all these pizza places happened, it was all this thick crust. I mean, if you can hold a piece of pizza and it's standing straight out, then it's not a good pizza. No. Zachary's, I think, is uh, they make a, a thick, uh, one of those, uh, what do they call them, Sicilian? Yeah. Uh, yeah no, no, Sicilian is the, is Sicilian yeah. is the... The square, square. Right. right? Yeah, but I'm, it's like a deep. It's like the Chicago style uh, uh, yeah. pizzerina Uno or whatever they call yeah. themselves. Yeah, uh, but also the the pizza that we know, the round pizza, is an American derivation of the Italian pizza, which was square. Mm. Uh, and uh, now I think they serve the round ones in Italy too. Well, you know, it makes sense. You know, the square pizza, you only get four corners. But with the round pizza, you don't have to fight over the corners. I've, I've never been crazy about pizza. <laughs> never about been it. crazy about pizza. No? It, it, too much pizza. dough and too little meat and cheese. <laughs> you know, it's just... It's a, it, that's, it, that's do you agree with me, Rob? Meat and cheese, Rob? I did Sergeant Atkins on Tuesday. I've lost three pounds already. Really? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have to stop Atkins because I just lost... I'm now down to 189. And I think it's time to stop. Jeez, and, that's my IQ. And I'm afraid that I'm going to try and stop, and I'm still going to keep losing, and that I'm on my way to death. You know, uh, you need to slowly introduce the carbs back. Just, just start eating some blueberries. But, uh, you know what I really wanted the other day? We uh, had lox and bagels here, and I couldn't I have the bagel. The bagels. It's... The, huh? The bagels are so high and oh, oh, they're really high. And bread is really high. And pasta because is really so I did it. I did it too quick one time, and I started getting the shakes from the carbs. Really? You no, know, it was just bread, and I was getting the shakes. Wow. And I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm just like, I, I felt like, you know. Let me ask Ray. Ray, how old are you? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. 
look at it. You're trim. You're lean. Do you, do you exercise and run and do things like that? Uh, yeah, I, I work. I exercise every day, pretty much. I do martial arts. I I do my Muay Thai kickboxing mostly. Oh, because you're looking. Although great. I'm having arthritis, so I'm having problems with that now. But, uh, well, that that has, that has nothing to do with exercise. It maybe does have something to do with exercise. Close and conjointing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, I really want to thank all of you. Ray, would you please call back again now that we have you uh, on the contact list so that you can just Absolutely. call right in? Absolutely. I'll be trying to come call as much as I can. Because you, uh, you, you're really terrific. And uh, Thanks, Alex. all of you have been terrific. Uh, you know, uh, nine tonight. Huh? We nine, nine tonight. Yeah. We were one short of a full house. But, uh, you know, uh, that can be fixed too. But I'm, I'm and, and this is Christmas, you know, the, after the holidays, which usually is kind of slow in a way but anyway i want to thank phil meyer i want to thank mark green always great to see you mark jason it's nice to know the wife let you out of the house tonight <laughs> anthony tony thank you scott Boddicker. say hello scott hello scott yeah so they, <laughs> they know you're there rob alfano welcome back to the united states of enigma <laughs> and uh, Jeff Stein, thank you. And Ray Renati, I want you to call more. Now, now, now that we've got it so you, you're you on the list and you can call right in. Thanks, wow. everybody. Have a good weekend. Hopefully we'll see, see you, you well. Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. And that, that's it for tonight. I just almost cut my microphone off. Let me kill the... Uh, let me kill Skype first of all. Let me put me on full camera for the TV people. And then let me kill the Skype because uh, the next show has to use the line. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again on Tuesday with uh, another rendition of The Ramble. In the meantime, stay tuned for The Intersection next, followed by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. And if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, everybody. Hey, thank you so much to the TV people for watching tonight. And uh, uh, don't forget, we do this every Friday, but we do the show um, Tuesday through Friday uh, at gabnet.net. Okay? Thank you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Okay, bye. <laughs>